GHS 69. St. Matthew. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people, unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why troubled ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. 
I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook.
forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said. Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him, and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by, and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
The cage is broken, come out, be free. He the call to safety in Christ alone. Hearken now, my dear friend, and glad you be. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion, yes, in Christ. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion. Afflictions, you say goodbye. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion, yes, in Christ. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion, oh, yes, in Christ. Complete dominion in Christ. Jesus forevermore. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion, yes, in Christ. Complete dominion is only in Jesus. Complete dominion, only in Christ. Complete dominion in Christ. Complete dominion. 
Hallelujah. Prophet, Pastor. Praise the Lord. If you are ready for complete dominion around you, in your home, in our country, and everywhere you go, dominion. What are you? The Lord perform it in your life. We are here in Ogun State, Ogun State, Ogun Central, here in Abe Okota, the Alpha location. And I want to announce to the world that here there is going to be complete dominion flowing out of here to every part of the world in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Abe Okota Choir. We have complete dominion and tonight it will start where tell me tell me it will start in your life why don't you raise up that hand father we thank you today we come to you with great expectation and faith that what you have done in the lives of other people all over the nations everywhere you will do it even at this time in jesus name lord jesus christ savior redeemer deliverer we honor you we adore you and we praise you and we're asking that your name will bring dominion to everyone here everywhere over the radio over the television social media everywhere in jesus name Amen. glorify yourself Amen. from this very day and from this first event first message and first ministration lord i pray you'll begin a great unforgettable work in every life even tonight in jesus name thank you lord we receive it is done in jesus name we pray another amen before you sit down god bless you you can sit down we're talking about dominion heaven only knows about dominion and when god created man the purpose of god the plan of god and what god wanted to see done on earth in all generations is for everyone to have dominion and so god created man and he put the stamp of dominion upon the man and upon uh, the woman let me read it to you we're looking at genesis chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image you understand even from that before we read on that god a god of power a god of wonders a god of authority a god that has all things possible he said he wanted man not in a lower image he wanted man in his own image let us create man in our image after our likeness you see the original intention and the original plan of god and he says and let them have let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth look at that over all the earth god's man at creation what created that he will have dominion over all the earth and then it says and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth verse 27 tells us so god created man as he said 
as he planned, so he did. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, created even. That means then the man and the woman having the same image of God. They were both in dominion and the plan of God is that they will bring up offsprings like them, descendants like them, children and their children and their children and their children, all like them, to have dominion until it gets to you that everyone on the face of the earth will have dominion. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, in verse 28, what he had said he would do, he actually did. And then he brought blessing upon them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, fill up the earth with people like you, having dominion. I'm telling you, the original plan of God, original intention of God, original purpose of God, is that everyone of the descendants of Adam and Eve will have dominion, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. The world, or any element in the world, the world was not to subdue man, subject man, dominate man. The man the woman, you and I, you and your neighbor, you and every member of your family, everyone here, everyone there, all the people that are hearing my voice now, the original intention of God is that you will have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every, every, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That is what we are talking about. Dominion. Creation in dominion. But then something happened. I'll tell you, I'll show you the story. Number one, created for dominion. Number two, corrupted. And they lost dominion. Then number three now, Christ came, converted. And the conversion brings us back to the original dominion that God had in mind. And I pray today it will happen in your life. I want to warn you. I want to sound a note of warning. There are people that come to meetings like this and they say, I'm already a Christian. Uh huh. We're talking about dominion. I'm already a church goer. I hear you. We're talking about dominion. I already hold the Bible in my hand. I hear you. We're talking about dominion. I already know everything they are talking about. I even brought somebody. God bless you, you brought somebody, but we're talking about dominion. And the dominion we're talking about, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, there is an area of your life, there is an area within you, there is an area of your personality where you do not have dominion and tonight the lord will bring you out of that place you will come into dominion somebody there i will come into dominion it will happen i said it will happen 
And when that dominion is coming your way, you will not dodge. Answer me now. And that dominion tonight will not miss you in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on the promised dominion through faith in Christ. The promised dominion through faith in Christ. Three things we're talking about. Number one, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. Number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Adam and Eve traded strength for weakness. Adam and Eve traded dominion with defeat. Adam and Eve traded power with weakness. They led, they dropped, they gave away the dominion they had because corruption came in and they relinquished the delegated dominion that they had. Point number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. But thank God in Christ there's restoration. I said in Christ there is restoration. In Christ, there is renewal. In Christ, there is regeneration. In Christ, everything we lost through the fall of Adam and Eve, we're going to regain. And tonight, tonight, whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, whatever has been taken away from you or stolen away from you a restoration is coming to your life tonight in jesus name Amen. number three the restoration of desired dominion by christ only christ can restore and give back to you what you have lost in Adam and Eve. One, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. Number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Number three, the restoration of desired dominion by Christ. Look at number one here. Number one, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. I read it to you already in Genesis. The Lord created Adam and Eve. And he decreed that they will have dominion. That decree, nothing could have altered that. Nothing could have changed that until they missed their steps. And they subjected themselves to the suggestion of the serpent in Satan and the Satan is serpent, the old serpent. We're told at the time of creation in Psalm 8, reading from verse 6. Psalm 8, reading from verse 6, thou madest him to have dominion. The psalmist, thousands of years after creation, looked back into history and he said, the Almighty God, Thou, Thou the Creator, Thou the Originator and the Maker of Man, You made Him to have dominion over the works of Thy hands. Thou hast put all things on Thy feet. Let's recap a little bit. At the time of creation, the creation of Adam, the creation of Eve, and the intention of the Lord that all their descendants will have that same dominion. There was no sin, they had dominion. There was no sickness, they had dominion. There was no suffering, they had dominion. There was no subjection, subjection to any power. Power of any man, power of Satan, power of the devil, power of demons, power
power of the powers of darkness they were not in subjection to even angels they were not in subjection to sin they were not in subjection to crime they were not in, in subjection to any evil power any evil habit of any man they were in authority they were in power they were in dominion and they were not in subjection to any form of sickness they were healed and hearty they were well they were strong and their brains their brains did not have any deficiency at all they were in dominion complete dominion and all the things we fight today those things were not there because literally they had the nature of god the image of god the authority of God, the authority God had in heaven, they had that authority here on earth. They were completely fearless, confident, courageous, anything they wanted. They were men and women of decree. Whatever they decreed here on earth, it was confirmed in heaven. And God placed them in the garden, the garden of Eden, the garden of pleasure, the garden of ease, the garden of fruitfulness. That's what they what that's where they were. That's what they were. That's who they were. There was no need in their lives that heaven will not supply immediately but then god gave a command to adam and he said you will keep this garden keep this garden keep this garden if adam had thought of that very well and had done that the way he should if he catch the garden you know, the serpent will not have had time or leisure or possibility of coming in. Before I go on, your own garden, your own life, your own destiny, your brain, your mind, your lifestyle, and the goodness of God that God has created you with. Keep your garden. Keep your garden. We are found that the descendants of Adam, they have done exactly as Adam had done. Adam did not keep the garden. And you, I can tell, number one, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is carelessness. There is evil. There is neglect. That men and women today they have not kept their garden the way God expected them to. And eventually, the serpent came and spoke and said, As God said, he made the devil, Satan, made him to doubt, made Eve to doubt the word of God. Isn't that the same method he uses today? As God said, man should not sin. As God said, man should not do evil. As God said, man should be holy and righteous. As God said, we must be overcomers all the time. He makes people to doubt. The word of God. As God said, we should live victoriously. As God said, we should be overcomers. As God said, we should have authority and dominion. And so he brings temptation. Adam and Eve, Eve and Adam fell into that temptation i'm sure you must have heard this story before and then god came in the cool of the day 
and said, Adam, where are you? The man is no more in the place of dominion. Adam, where are you? The man is no more in the place of authority. Adam, where are you? The man has led the image of God. The likeness of God is taking up and taking on another image, another likeness. Adam, where are you? He had led the place and the position of dominion and authority. He said, I had your voice in the garden, but because I do not have your nature anymore. I do not have your likeness anymore. We cannot talk eye to eye anymore because I lost something and I feel naked and ashamed and there's no power, there's no authority. He could not stand. And God said, Adam, Have you eaten of the fruit? I told you not to. Yes or no? He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He said, the woman, he passed the bog. He passed the blame. Looks like Adam has passed his nature of excuse making to everyone on earth. Did you do this? Yes or no? They will not answer like that. They will say, so and so made me do it. Did you get drunk? Yes or no? They won't answer like that. They made me drunk. Did you fight? Yes or no? They won't say yes or no. So and so originated it. Have you seen yes or no? They won't say yes or no. They will say everywhere around us is corrupt. And so the corruption made me do it. Are you pretending? Are you hypocritical? Yes or no? They won't answer yes or no. I'm trying to cover my face. And so excuses came and God drove the man and the woman out of the garden of Eden. Corruption came. Look at Job chapter 31. In Job chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 33. It says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam, if I covered my transgressions as Adam, transgression has come. Because of that, tragedy has come to man. Sin has come. Because of that, sickness, suffering has come to man. Iniquity, evil has come in the life of man. Every man. Every man. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. There is the penalty, there is the punishment of sin that anyone commits. And especially when we cover it up. We cover it up with a plastic smile. And we pretend we're happy. And no sinner in reality is happy. His conscience condemns him. His neighbors condemn him. He condemns himself. But he tries to make face and he tries to pretend. He tries to act like a good man. And he covers up his transgression, his iniquity, and his sin. He is under condemnation the lord jesus said everyone that walks in darkness 
He hates the light. And this is the condemnation that light is come into this world. But men and women love darkness rather than light. That's the condemnation. But today, as we realize that the excuse making of Adam and Eve had passed into your life. And instead of covering up with a smile, covering up with hypocrisy, covering up with whatever you're trying to do, you come out and you say, what I lost in Adam, I want to regain in Christ. New life will come to you. I said new life will come to you. Recovery, conversion, new life, regeneration will come to you and the lost dominion you will have in Jesus name Job 31 33 says if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom then verse 34 tells us did I fear a great multitude? He said, that that's something that makes people to cover up. Do I fear my classmates? Do I fear my neighbors? Do I fear religious people around me? Do I fear my friends? Do I fear the people that I thought I was an angel and now they're going to discover after all he's not an angel after all she's not an angel she's like a sin she's a sinner like everybody else he says did i fear a great multitude or did the content of families terrify me the people that will say ah now we see him now we see her and the thing has come out from the bag he was a hypocrite after all he was a drunkard after all he was an adulterer after all she was an adulteress after all and because of that they're not coming to Christ they want their lives to be private they cannot do like Zacchaeus that said in the open, Lord, if I have taken anything from any man by false assertion, I restore him for fools, and then of my goods now I give to the poor. Compassion came upon him. Did the content of families terrify me that I kept silence? Catch silence. I pray that this night and all the nights of this crusade, when Christ is calling you and when He's bringing you to the Lord's dominion, you will not be quiet. You will not keep silence. And then that lost dominion you will regain in jesus name he said that i kept silence and went not out of the door what does that mean out of the door there are people that lock themselves up they lock the door you cannot come in to them Life, light cannot come into their dark dungeon. They lock up themselves in their darkness, in their sin. And the Lord is saying, Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he comes to Christ and Christ comes to him. There are people at the day of opportunity when the Lord is saying, I am here, 
I'll save you. I'm here. I'll forgive you. I'm here. I'll set you free. Come out of that dungeon of darkness and come to the light. For Christ is the light of the world. That those so will hide themselves there and they miss a great chance of having dominion when Christ, the giver of dominion, is very near. Tonight, you'll not be like that. Say, I will not be like that. That leads me to point number two. The relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Adam compromised. He lost fellowship with God. Adam and Eve compromised. They lost the dominion, the authority. Adam and Eve compromised and they lost the garden, the garden of pleasure and peace and power and fulfillment and sufficiency. And then all their descendants until they got to you, got to me, got to everyone, what they lost, we have lost. They relinquished, they delegated dominion that they had. And then they passed that loss to their own children. Genesis chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's what happened to all those descendants of Adam and Eve. Everyone became, number one, evil. Number two, only evil. Number three, only evil continually. Number four, every imagination, every thought, every plan, every desire, and the path they took was the path of sinfulness and the path of evil. And that applies to everyone. Sin became the thought of the heart. Thoughts will lead to action. Sin became the action of everyone. Action will lead to habit. And sin became the habit of everyone. Habit will lead to character. And sin, evil, became the character of everyone. And the character would lead to destiny. And destiny now is undesirable destiny. And if you look at your life, every evil thing you have done, every sin you have committed, every thought that led you in the wrong direction started with a thought that's why god said my thought is not your thought when god created adam and eve the same image in his likeness their thought was like the thought of god but now they lost that dominion and they lost it to corruption and now your thought is the thought of evil. God has the thought of holiness and the thought of righteousness and the thought of purity and the thought of dominion over every evil action. But man talking about you, woman talking about you, when lost that thought of God and now we became unrighteous we became sinful and our sin 
and our unrighteousness condemns us and our love for evil our love for darkness our love for sinfulness brought condemnation upon every heart and every life but now as we turn to the lord he christ is the only one that can bring back that dominion and that power but you must be plain you mustn't do like adam did covering up your sin covering up your evil imagination look at verse 11 genesis chapter 6 verse 11 the earth also was corrupt before god and of course god condemns corruption christ condemns corruption why would he die for our sin why would he die for our corruption why would he die for the evil we have done if he didn't condemn corruption and sin and evil the punishment we should have borne he bore for us and when we realize and we turn when we realize and we run away from that evil when we realize and we say lord i look at my life the dominion over sin the dominion over evil the dominion over corruption that should have been there that dominion has been lost but now i come in sorrow i come in repentance because my conscience condemns me my habit condemns me my lifestyle condemns me but lord i come i come for forgiveness he will forgive you amen, amen. amen. it will turn your life around amen. and the condemnation we inherited from adam and eve the blood of jesus and the sacrifice of jesus will take that condemnation and corruption away in jesus name the earth also was corrupt before god and the earth was filled with violence god condemns violence he condemns fighting he condemns strife man beating the wife the wife being wicked to the husband god condemns that if we are the nature of god the nature of god is love the nature of god is helpfulness will help one another will love one another it is the nature of falling adam that brings violence and strife into our lives but as we come to christ that evil nature fighting nature violent nature oppressive nature wicked nature the lord will take away from us and then in verse 12 it says and god looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt can we point a accusing finger to that generation without looking at our own generation the time we live in our communities in our families in our local government and even in religious circles the violence the corruption the evil the stealing the drunkenness and the family violence and oppression god hates that anywhere it's found whatever name we're called however religious we might be if there is sin 
God hates sin. If there is evil, God hates evil. If there is hypocrisy hiding in her, under religion, you will be going to the best church in town. If violence, strife, fighting, drunkenness, stealing, corruption, crime, if that is in our lives, the Lord hates it, the Lord condemns it, but He wants us to turn. And it's only when we turn, and when we turn to the Lord, that His forgiveness will come. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, all flesh had corrupted His way were responsible it's what we have done that makes us evil satan cannot force evil on anyone your neighbor cannot force sin on you whatever we have done don't let us act like adam the woman you gave me she gave me the fruit and i ate that did not spare him from judgment but as we come and as we tell the lord and we say lord i'm the guilty one i'm the offending man i'm the offending woman i am the one that did the evil then god will have mercy on us because we repent there's mercy waiting for you today if you repent if you call upon the lord if you say lord i am the guilty one and i want your mercy that mercy will come that forgiveness will come if we're not pretending and thinking my being religious protects me uh -uh. religion does not protect anyone if that one has not turned away from sin has not turned away from evil it is in the repentance it is in the turning away from evil that then the mercy of god will come upon our lives we're looking at psalm 53 and i'm reading from verse 1 psalm 53 we're looking at verse 1 it says the fool has said in his heart there is no god what that simply means is the people that do evil they act as if god will not see me god will not take note of what i do god does not mind anymore he's such an indulgent god now he does not condemn evil anymore those people that do evil and they are not thinking god sees me god knows me god knows my where i go they are corrupt corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity there is none that doeth good that's it all have sinned and come short of the glory of god because there is none that doeth good look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 god looked down from heaven upon the children of men uh, to see if there be any if there were any that did understand uh, that did seek god verse 3 tells us it says every one of them uh, is gone back they are all together become uh, filthy look at your life don't hide like adam don't cover up like adam Feel the language, feel the appearance, feel the lifestyle, feel the drinking, feel the action. We've lost the dominion. That man does not have dominion anymore 
over all those filthy lifestyles there is none that doeth good no not one but thank god as we come to the lord in total repentance as we come to the lord saying lord i come he has forgiveness for every repentant person say amen yes. he has mercy for every repentant person say amen yes. and as god is calling you he's not calling us to a life of corruption i love you i love your corruption never it's not calling us to a life of sinfulness i love you i love your sin never he hates every sin he condemns every sin but the sinner who will repent who will say lord i know lord i understand your purer eyes than to behold iniquity i come in repentance and i want you in my life mercy will come to you tonight forgiveness will come to you tonight and life will turn around and the dominion you lost you will have that dominion tonight in jesus name i could even say a greater amen than that one let's look at it now we're looking at point number three point number three the restoration somebody help me shout restoration. restoration if you're going to have restoration tonight shout it aloud restoration. restoration if there is anything god is looking for he's looking for an opportunity in your life that everything you lost in adam he will start that to you tonight yes. dominion over sin give me a good amen dominion over sickness good me give me a good amen and dominion over suffering give me a good amen and dominion over subjection the subjection under the power of the enemy the lord will bring you out tonight in jesus name uh, look at isaiah chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 13 isaiah chapter 26 verse 13 O lord our god other lords beside thee have had dominion over us look at that language hear that declaration O lord our creator O lord our god O lord our redeemer other lords beside thee have had dominion over us think about your life do like job said i will not hide my sin under a cover O lord our god other lord survived dominion over us alcohol has had dominion over some people immorality has had dominion over some people and corruption stealing whether they're stealing government money or stealing their neighbor's money stealing has had dominion over some people and for some people covetousness has had dominion over them oh lord our god all the lords beside thee little hell lost as had dominion over them little hell lying as had dominion over them little hell lasciviousness as had dominion over them oh lord our god if we're sincere like that and we come to the lord with open heart our sincerity and we say this we know all that lords have had dominion over us but we want to turn around but want to have total repentance but we're looking for restoration but by thee only we will make mention of thy name those are the people 
that are asking for a change of life a change of heart and they want to have the original dominion that god created adam and eve with tonight you can have that original dominion tonight somebody shout tonight god is a god of power as he had power on the day of creation he still has power on all his creatures even at this time and if you say lord here am i no pretense here am i no covering up here am i and there is uh, no hypocrisy i come he will forgive you it will change your life it will turn everything around and then uh, he'll give you the dominion everyone in christ ought to have how does that happen acts chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 repent ye therefore you want dominion repent ye therefore you want a new life repent ye therefore and you want authority over every evil sin in life repent ye therefore and be converted let me remind you three things again number one created for dominion number two corrupted lucina dominion number three converted now to have and to regain dominion tonight there'll be dominion over sin tonight there'll be dominion over sickness tonight there'll be dominion over every satanic attack and satanic affliction in jesus name complete 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 the people will come and they say lord i'm coming lord i'm coming and as you have said repent ye therefore you want authority power dominion and you want total freedom therefore if that's what you want repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out it will take the cleaner the melting the eraser from heaven it will wipe away all your sin that they will not be remembered against you anymore tonight the power of heaven will come to you and then we'll look at that evil sin that you have done the lies you have told the violence in your hand the fighting in your life the evil nature in your life he will come and with the power of heaven he will wipe everything away in jesus name that's what he's expecting to do that's what he loves to do and that's what he plans to do for everyone that will look at their lives as the lord is asking them where art thou today is not adam it's you where art thou where are you where do you stand and where are you living what's that evil thing in your hand and as you come and say lord here i am i've gone astray but i want to return to the path of rectitude relationship with the lord the lord tonight will have mercy upon your life in jesus name it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out he will do it i said he will do it now that is the number one glorious wonderful thing the lord wants to do he wants you to have 
his nature of righteousness again his nature of righteousness and purity again because he doesn't want sins in our lives he wants his nature to be in us he wants his image to be in us that it will come and then he'll blot out your sins when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord the time of renewal the time of remission of sin the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord tonight I said tonight I said tonight what are you it will happen it will take your sins away it will forgive your sin it will cleanse your sin it will change your life it will write your name in the book of life in heaven and when your name enters that book of life in heaven dominion comes victory comes triumph comes power over every evil will come in your life in jesus name Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it tells us, Acts chapter 3, verse 26. It says, Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. He will bless you tonight. He will bless me tonight. I said he will bless me tonight. Is Saint Jesus, his son, to bless you in turning away? Look at that. In turning away, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Tonight is your night. As you trust in the Lord, as you believe in the Lord, salvation will come. As you believe in the Lord, dominion will come in your life again in Jesus' name. And every evil thing that has dominated your life, oppressed your life, and almost driven you into doing evil, the Lord will break the power of sin out of your life tonight in Jesus name are you there where are you you will not give excuse I say where are you you will not pretend like Adam I said where are you you will not cover up like Adam I say where are you the Lord bless you tonight the Lord forgive you tonight the Lord change your life tonight and the Lord grant you the dominion you lost in Adam tonight in Jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed for anyone everyone that will be sincere tonight and will say yes I understand the dominion I lost in Adam with Adam but I'm coming back I repent I turn from my sin I turn from my evil and tonight I want the forgiveness and the freedom of the Lord wherever you are it's bowed and eyes closed just raise up your hand in all sincerity Lord I turn Lord I repent Lord I want you in my life Lord I've been weak and all those evil things in society they have had dominion over me but now Lord I come I repent of my sin wherever you are just raise up your hand and the Lord is going to forgive you tonight it's going to change your life tonight and it's going to give you that salvation that will get you to heaven eventually where are you raise up that hand thank you very much god bless you if you're raising up your hand can you please stand up wherever you are you're raising up your hand you stand up wherever you are you want dominion over sin 
dominion over evil, dominion over your condemnation, dominion over every evil sin that you have done. And you are telling the Lord, I don't want to continue in all these things, but Lord, I was powerless. I didn't have the power. I didn't have the authority. My, I didn't have the backbone to stand. But now, Lord, I come to you. I don't want to continue in any secret sin, private sin, public sin. I want to come into the life of righteousness. You are raising up your hand. You stand up wherever you are. And we're praying together. While you're standing up, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I come in all sincerity. Oh Lord, I come with my whole heart. I hate the evil things I've been doing. And now I turn, and I turn to the Lord tonight. I need forgiveness from you. I need cleansing from you. And I need to give me that power and authority so I will not continue in my sins anymore. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Is there any your prayer? Whoso covereth the sin shall not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Say, Lord, I thank you. I know Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary to take the guilt and the condemnation of my sin away thank you lord thank you lord believe and in the power to live in newness of life the lord will grant unto you father in the name of jesus our savior our lord who died for us on the cross of calvary we come believing the promise you have given that whosoever comes to you in repentance, you will in no wise cast away. We ask, O oh Lord, all these who have come, forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Take away the guilt. Take away the condemnation. And give them the power of a new life in Jesus name take the condemnation away and give them peace of heart and victory over all the evil of the past in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord we know you have answered let them have the assurance of your salvation now in Jesus name we pray a good, good amen. Oh, go central stage. Amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And uh, they will take the details from you. You have come into new life now. And the power of the Lord will abide and remain with you. You will not go back into that evil life anymore in Jesus' name. We we'll call on our state of us here to help us at this time. And after that, I'll come back and pray for those who need dominion over every evil work in their lives. The counselors should please quickly spread so everywhere. And take note of all those that are standing off and quickly meet with them, collect their names, and let the names be legible, the phone numbers, and check that the phone numbers are correct. Normally our phone numbers are 11 digits. Those who can write on their own, let them write, but check very well to be sure that 
the names are complete and readable. And if you are online and you have responded to this call, that is as the word went out, you also repented and you had given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You just watch the screen very well and click on what you have there. It will lead you into a form that you will complete. And just follow the direction. And that will help so that you can be touched and reached again. And also in the various locations where counselors are physically present, let's ensure that all the necessary data are well caught. And those of you that are listening on radio and television, oh, what a wonderful decision you have made is the best decision you can make in life. To give your life to Jesus? Oh, very special, very special. So, I gladly welcome you into the fold of Christ. So take note of these phone numbers that we'll be telling you now and showing you too on the screen. Look at it very well on the screen. 091-5444-9263. If you are outside Nigeria, you need to add or begin with the code plus two, four, three, two, three, four. The number again is, please listen very well and take notes, plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, 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 nine, two. Six, three. Our Father and the Lord, the pastor, he would love to hear from you. So, ensure you connect with Christ. And through that number, oh, your life will not be the same again. Please send your name, your own phone number, and your address. Remember, you have given your life to Christ. Everything you do now must be real. No pretense, no hypocrisy. Let's hear from you. Ah, don't forget tonight, our Father and the Lord will soon be back bringing miracle your way. From this Alpha location here to wherever you may be, something great will happen. For Ogo Central, Central Miracle. Are you there? Central Miracle to Asia. Central to the whole of Africa. To America. To Britain. To to the whole world, Central Miracle. And of course, on the radio and television... 
Are you joining us via satellite? It's your night. Don't wait for tomorrow. Your miracle begins from tonight. Cancel us, remember? When you are through, please let us know. When you are through, signal. And uh, those of you who are giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, I have a cheering news for you. Tomorrow, you have a lunch hour. You have a lunch hour with the Lord. And it's right. Just look at me here. I'm pointing to a building right to my right hand side there. You can see the upstairs, the cream colored building. Edwin Hall. It's an event center. There by 3 p.m. Something great awaits you there. 3 p.m. Lunch hour with the Lord. Please, all of us counselors, lead, lead all the converts there. Lead your convert there. Make sure they are there. Do everything you must. Do everything to help them to be there. We're still waiting. If you have finished, on my left-hand side here, if you have finished, you can just give the signal. And in the Yoruba section, if you have finished, just wave to us here. And directly in front of me here, if you have finished, let us know as you wave your hand. And on my right hand side, just wave when you are finished. Well, I can see in the front you are finished, but how about that at the far back? At the far back, if we are finished, let us know as you wave your hand. And on the extreme right here, Cancel us if you are finished. Just let's see you as you move forward to give us the information. Don't forget, 3 p.m. tomorrow in Edwin Hall, on my right hand side here, the lunch hour meeting with the Lord holds. And cancel us. Ensure that all the converts that you have assisted tonight, all those names that you collected tonight, make sure you lead them to that place tomorrow. The building is conspicuous on my right hand side, just outside the gate there. The cream colored building, Edwin Hall. 3 p.m. tomorrow, lead them there. Yes, I want to confirm. If you are finished everywhere, okay. I can say, okay, okay. Our Father and the Lord will soon be coming up now. Get ready for your miracle. Tonight, not tomorrow. Receive tonight. Let's rise up as we welcome him to the podium. Praise the Lord. You clap like you're in a local government. Amen. amen let somebody that shout amen. amen there's dominion over sin every sin over sickness every sickness over satanic affliction every satanic affliction and as we pray now in the name of Jesus, the name that cannot fail, that name will cancel every sickness out of your body. Yeah. Healing coming your way, yeah. deliverance coming your way, yeah. miracle coming your way. Yeah. Whatever sickness you have, those who are here and those who are listening over the radio, television, online 
anywhere, everywhere. The power of the Lord will meet you at your point of need right there. Yeah. And then when we hear the final amen, every evil sin, every sickness will have gone out of your body. Yeah. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the problem. And that sin, sickness, pain, whatever, everything will vanish out of your body. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we thank you, Lord, because of what you are able to do and what you plan to do and what you have promised you are going to do. We ask, oh Lord, that you touch every life right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Manifest your power. Manifest your authority. Manifest your dominion over sickness, over Satan, over every evil thing in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, where there is sickness, there will be health. Where there is any damage, you bring repair to every part of their lives, every part of their body right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you knock off the hand of Satan out of everyone's body, everyone's life, everyone's family right now in Jesus' name. Over here, over the radio, over the television, anywhere and everywhere online, in every location right now, manifest your power and destroy the works of the devil. Lord, I pray those blind eyes, open them now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Deaf and don't make them to hear, make them to speak in Jesus' name. Yeah. And those who are paralyzed or having arthritis or any kind of a problem, impediment in their motion, in their walking, let your power come to them now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray for every swelling, whether it's cancer or whatever, Remove it right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every kind of a problem or pain or sickness, whatever the name may be, they will bow under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dominion everywhere. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Miracle everywhere for everyone. I pray, Lord, to the left, to the right, to the center, to the back, and everywhere, confirm miraculous healing right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The Lord has answered in Jesus' name. Take up yourself and you'll find your miracle of healing, deliverance, dominion is already there.